Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to create an AWS MySQL Aurora cluster. Um, we're then going to log into that cluster using uh, PG Admin, which is a PostgreSQL um, client, completely free, create a database, populate that database with some tables and some data, and then do some basic queries um, on those tables. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to RDS on the uh, Amazon console. Uh, let that load up. Uh, once loaded, uh, we'll go to create database, which is what we want to do on a uh, We're going to just do a standard create. We want Amazon Aurora. Make sure you click the PostgreSQL. There's a video on MySQL already on the channel. So uh, switch over to that if you want to see MySQL, but we're going to do PostgreSQL. Uh, we're going to do a dev and test instance. Uh, we're going to call this music. Uh, oops, sorry, we're just going to call that music. Leave the master um, username as Postgres, just just so we uh, so we remember. Uh, master password. You type in something that you're going to uh, remember. Uh, just do that confirmation. Uh, use the burstable classes, including the T range. Go for a medium because we're just going to let it spin up quickly, and uh, it won't cost us too much money, if anything. Um, we don't need to create a, a, a replica. Uh, we actually have to create a, a new VPC for this so we can publicly uh, log in. So let's create a new VPC. Additional configuration, we'll create a new subnet. Make sure you click on publicly accessible or else we will not be able to reach it by today's methodology. We'll do a different video on how to reach it when it's not publicly accessible. Uh, but today, it's gonna to be publicly accessible. Uh, create a new VPC security group. Enter something you're going to remember, like uh, v VPC uh, SG JC demo. Um, availability zone will have no preference. Leave the port as default, which is five four three two. We're going to use password um, authentication, and um, we'll we'll leave that as it is, and then just uh, create that database. So click create. Okay, that's the database off running and creating. It'll probably take five, 10 minutes to get fully to the status of available. I'm looking for available appearing in both um, these rows. It will go through some different statuses, including like not compatible and stuff while it spins up. So just bear with it, keep clicking refresh. In the meantime, uh, navigate over to the postgres.org uh, link, uh, link in the description below. Uh, you wanna download, um, so once on the downloads page, then just click the version that you want. If you're on Mac, go to Mac. If you're on Windows, go to Windows. If you're on Linux, go to Linux. Go to the download installer. Just pick the version that you want, uh, Mac OS or, or Windows, uh, depending on what you want. Click the download button. Uh, uh, yep, just let it get off and run down there on the left-hand side. Once that's downloaded, just accept all the prerequisites um, as you see fit, and then that's us ready to go. Okay, that's us. Um available and ready to go. So the next thing to do is go to the PG admin client. So I'm just gonna start that up uh, right now. PG admin four client. Um, it'll take a little second. It just starts the server locally on your desktop. Yep, that's us. So just, uh, you'll be asked to set a master password the first time you log in. So um, just, just set that. Um, what we need to do is add a new server. Uh, I'm just not going to save that. I'm going to call the server uh, music. Probably a good good name for it. Um, yep, server group servers connection. So we go over to connection. We jump back into our uh, uh, console. We go to uh, the instance itself. Just copy and paste that into the uh, host address. Perfect. Uh, our maintenance, leave these as the default. Our username is Postgres, that's what we select back. And then just type in the password um, that you entered a few minutes ago. And then uh, save that. And that will be you in. So you can see on the left hand side here, we're, we're ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is create a database. So create a database. And I'm going to call this one music. And we are going to save that. And that's our database then created as you can see uh, in music then what we're going to do uh, next is um, use the query tool click on the query tool and navigate over to uh, github I've put a couple of scripts on github so we're going to go to the creation script and if we just copy and paste in uh, that entire script uh, copy and paste in that entire script into the query editor rent window 
uh, what we're essentially doing here is creating two tables, song and artist, uh, and then we're populating those tables with data. So the artist, you can see with Rolling Stones, Nirvana, Mumford and & Sons, and then on songs, we have two Rolling Stones songs, two Nirvana songs, and one Mumford & Sons songs, and they're linked through that artist ID column. So in this case, one back into the one of the artist. So uh, if we just run that by clicking the pay button, uh, you can see that it was successfully ran and the tables, uh, those two tables uh, don't exist. So it's just skipping those points, which is the drop uh, if exists create and that's them available. So if we just refresh um, that schema and we look at the public and we look at the tables, we should have two tables. So there's artist and song. Perfect. Um, next thing we want to do is another new query table, a new query window, apologies. Uh, if we go back in to GitHub and we go back, I have wrote a couple of um, query scripts. So the first thing we do is just query that artist table to uh, have a look at the data. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that into the window and then click the play button to go. And you can see that we have returned to three artists and the ID and then their genre. So I'm just gonna take that query out. We take the second query. This one just brings back all everything in, the, in that song table. So we're just gonna paste it in play that query and you can see then we have our five songs, two Rolling Stones, two Nirvana and one Mumford and Songs. And then as I explained earlier, we have that link between the ID in the artist table and the artist ID in the song query table. So by forming an inner join, we'll get back the artists and the songs that they have performed. So if we just copy and paste that in again and we hit the play button, then you can see we've two Rolling Stones songs, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Start Me Up, or two Nirvana songs and our one Mumford and Sons song. So that's kind of it for today's lesson. Um, I'll make all the resources available as always on my channel, uh, on, on this channel and on my website, johnnychevers.co.uk. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.